I did something that would change my life forever. I did a test for seven weeks where I would tape my mouth shut. And by the end of the test, my life changed. My sleep got so much better. My aura health improved by a vast amount and I was starting to breathe through my nose. What abundant data now show whenever possible, meaning unless you're speaking or eating or you're exercising or other activities require some change in your pattern of breathing, we should really all be striving to breathe through our nose, not through our mouth. I knew it. Increased resistance through the nose allows you to inflate your lungs more, not less. The other thing that breathing through your nose allows you to do is it both warms and moisturizes the air that you bring into your lungs, which is more favorable for lung health than breathing through the mouth. So scientists are also finding that mouth breathing has a few other detrimental effects to the health. It can cause abnormal face, facial growth. It can cause ADHD. It could be uh, a cause of high blood pressure. It can worsen asthma. It can deprive the heart and brain of blood flow. And why does this happen? So mouth breathing forces air through the airway at such a large volume that it actually collapses your lungs. As opposed to breathing through the nose, that is supposed to be where you naturally take in the air. It actually gives you the proper amount of air to go through. And there is also a number of benefits that come with nose breathing. So what I found is that nose breathing is great for your sleep and your dental health and just your overall health in general. And you should never mouth breathe. Now, why shouldn't you mouth breathe? Well, he has a passage called mouths are for eating, noses are for breathing. The reason is most people don't realize that animals don't have connected noses and mouths for breathing. They only breathe through their nose. If they get sick or they're eating a lot of processed foods, Often they do start to breathe through their mouth, but we'll get to that in a minute. Nose breathing, on the other hand, is so beneficial in many ways. Not only does it purify the oxygen before it gets into your actual lungs, meaning if there's toxins or pollutants or some type of you know, brake dust in the air, it's helping to clean some of that out. That's why you have nose hair. But it heats it up, it puts humidity in it. In the winter, it's gonna cool it down, it's gonna put humidity in it, and it keeps carbon dioxide in your body. Also another thing to note is the nose is where you produce six times more nitric oxide than breathing through the mouth. And a lot of people have been hearing about nitric oxide lately, because guess what? They're using it to treat patients with COVID. We make our own oh, nitric oxide. interesting. <laughs> we make our own nitric oxide here. It, it plays an essential role in circulation, uh, vasodilation, gas exchange, and it even helps fight off, guess what? Viruses and bacteria. It's our first mm -hmm. line of defense. We make so much of that here. And that's another reason why it's so important to breathe through your nose. Now, one of the best ways to regulate breathing to the nose is through mouth taping. And what is mouth taping? It's very simple. Uh, you take a piece of tape, you put it across your mouth. I usually do this at night. And then what that does is it stops you from breathing through your mouth and it regulates all your breathing through your nose. And one of the ways I do this is with uh, this Next Care Stronghold uh, tape for sensitive skin. Uh, all I do uh, before I go to sleep is I just rip off a piece of this, about uh, the size, about just larger than my mouth. Oh, what I do is I pucker my lips. Mm -hmm. Now, what have I learned from taping my mouth? One of the most important things I've learned is uh, what I've just told you before, which is uh, nose breathing is such a net positive uh, for your overall health and for your overall body. Uh, a couple of things I realized when I was uh, breathing through my nose, especially when taking my mouth at night, was my sleep got massively enhanced. Another aspect of nasal breathing that's really beneficial is that the gas, nitric oxide, is actually created in the nasal passages. It's a gas that can cause relaxation of the smooth muscles that relate to the vasculature, not just of your nose, but of your brain and for all the tissues of your body. This is why nasal breathing and not mouth breathing is great for when you want to relieve congestion. So a lot of these things seem counterintuitive, right? Your nose is stuffed, so uh, that mainly makes people breathe through their mouth, but it turns out that breathing through your nose will allow some dilation of the vasculature, more blood flow, dilation of the nasal passages, and delivery of nitric oxide to all the tissues of your body and that dilation of the small capillaries that 
innervate essentially every organ of your body, allow the delivery of more nutrients and the removal of carbon dioxide and other waste products from those tissues more readily than if you're not getting enough, uh, excuse me, nitric oxide into your system. In Tai Chi, the way that they rate people and uh, you can get points to motor, if they can see that you're breathing. Yeah, so now think about when you go to yoga class and they're like, take a big deep breath. They want you to see it, they wanna hear your sigh. Both of those are expelling all of your carbon dioxide and making it actually a worse breath. You're not doing anything beneficial. And what your brain may trigger a ah response and you think that you're de-stressing, your adrenals are firing because now you have less oxygen available to what you need to do. Breathing right, on the other hand, is shown by Zen running, which is quite literally, you get your breath going, you focus on light breathing, you can run for a long time. There's a book on that and I'll link that in the description below. It's so important. You'll notice that you calm down. If you're in the gym and you're breathing heavy, of course your heart rate elevates, you get more stress, and you actually get out of breath quicker. Whereas if you're in the gym and you're working hard and you try to calm your breath down and make sure that you're back at baseline, your fitness is increasing. You're aerobically more fit because your body doesn't need all this excess oxygen, which is increasing carbon dioxide, which makes you tingle, which makes your head feel weird. And of course, then you feel nauseated and you need to sit down. All in all, remember to breathe light, breathe through your nose, make sure it's with your diaphragm, Exhale, hold for a few seconds, and don't take those big deep breaths or sigh throughout the day. And you're really gonna make sure that you are breathing properly. That you do have an oxygen tank, you have an air tank, you have two of them, and they're right here, and they can hold about six liters of air, and they are our lungs, and they're the same air tanks that dolphins use, and that whales use, and that seals use, and we have the same reflexes that these animals have. So the moment you put your face into cool water, you can even do this at your sink. Your heart rate's gonna lower about 20%. Blood is gonna start shifting, uh, coming in from your extremities into your core, and you're gonna enter this meditative state. That is not a placebo effect. It's called the mammalian dive reflex, and this is how uh, seals can stay down for 90 minutes at a time, whales can stay down for an hour, dolphins can stay down for several minutes. So humans have these reflexes too. And when you free dive, you feel these ancient reflexes, these senses waking up and coming on. And it is a completely surreal experience to essentially become a different animal when you're in the water. And the longest breath hold, not at depth, is about 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes. So, so the idea that in all of these things we have been told were scientifically impossible, the body is going to collapse past 100 feet because of all that pressure. Pressure doubles within the first 30, within the first 30 feet, in the first atmosphere, and it keeps increasing the deeper you go. So you can bring a Coke can down and it'll blow up at around 70 feet but the human body is just fine because it adapts the deeper and deeper we go. And in that, it's these mammalian dive reflexes that allow us to not only survive, but to prosper down there at these very deep depths. This body is created to dive deep. And it's something that has just been, we've been doing this for tens of thousands of years. And in the modern age, we don't need to dive down in the ocean and get fish, right? You go to Long John Silver's, or whatever we don't need to do anything except sit on a couch wow now i'm fascinated by this because you're right it seems like as humans can adapt as deeper that we go is that something that you can train someone that perhaps have very low lung capacity but through free diving and other things you can train yourself to hold your breath for from let's say for one minute which is probably what i can do maybe less to five minutes is that something you can train yourself to do i could get you to hold your breath about two and a half minutes three minutes and in, in about 30 minutes of, of training to just what? waking up to anyone could do this some people can go four minutes and and this is someone in, in a healthy someone who has a, a pathology someone who has underlying conditions can't do this but you seem to be a pretty healthy person so and this is a standard thing we don't need to do this so our bodies aren't acclimated to it. But when you start opening up the body and understanding its true potential, what we were really using it for before, we were sitting in front of desks all day, you know, and talking on Zoom, 
you start realizing that we've sold ourselves short for, for so long. And this really leads into breath as well, because just lung capacity, we were told that whatever organs we were given, especially in adulthood, that's what we got. You can't do anything about it. Your nervous system's automatic. You can't control it. Can't do, immune system is beyond conscious control. Uh, lung capacity, can't control that. All of that is garbage. And I'll show you 500 resources that, that show people that have done just this. So, so breathing and lung capacity is the easiest thing in the world at this free diving competition where I first, I was writing about for Outside Magazine. There were tall people, short people, large people, small people, whatever, every walk of life. They all had these <laughs> huge chests because wow. they had expanded their lung capacity. Average male lung capacity, about six liters. Herbert Nitsch, a world champion freediver, has 12 liter lung capacity. So, so he was not born this way. By act of will, by loosening this musculature and by making this very flexible, and breathing the way we're supposed to breathe, we can drastically change our posture. So much so that in the 1900s, this teenage girl had scoliosis, severe scoliosis, breathed her spine straight. And there's x-rays of this and taught thousands of other women to do the same thing. So it's so obvious, it's so in front of us that nobody thinks about the true power and potential of breathing.